Encounter is brought to you by the Broome County Council of Churches, where we connect compassion with needs as we inspire growth with dignity. You'll find us in special places throughout the community. For those who remain hungry, we provide meals. For those who are challenged, we build wheelchair ramps. We comfort those who are ill, minister to those who are confined, and we remain an advocate for change and understanding on behalf of every element of our community. Connect and inspire. Encounter the Broome County Council of Churches. Friends, welcome to the Encounter program sponsored by the Broome County Council of Churches. I'm your host today, Mark Kimpland. I'm the pastor at the Endwell United Methodist Church. Over the next few months, we will be uh, welcoming and introducing several new clergy and pastors to the area. And so we begin that process today as I welcome to the Encounter show Pastor Holly Strickland, who is the pastor at the West Side United Methodist Church in Elmira and also the Webb Mills uh, Church in Pine City. Holly, welcome to the Encounter program. Thank you. It's great to be here. Thank you for accepting the invitation and we welcome you to the area and I'm excited to learn uh, more about your ministry and your background. So why don't we start there uh, by sharing with our viewers and our listeners a little bit about your uh, your background, uh, where you come from, a little bit, uh, a snapshot of who Holly is. Okay, uh, glad to do that. I am a native of Elmira, mm -hmm. born and raised there, oldest of seven, went through the school districts and really enjoyed English. Mm -hmm. So uh, by seventh grade, I knew I wanted to be an English teacher. Oh, wow. Um, enjoyed a really great childhood. Uh, whenever we would play school, mm -hmm. I was always the teacher. <laughs> and although people thought I may have been bossy, I think it was my leadership skills that actually were coming through. Mm -hmm. Then um, went to the U of R, University of Rochester, for um, English education. Stayed there for reading and literacy, I have a master's there. Went into the classroom and became an English and reading teacher for a number of years in the Rochester district. Then I decided, well, maybe I should look into administration. The district was offering a program, an incentive to become an uh, administrator. So I went to St. John Fisher, got my administrative degree, and became an administrator. Didn't think I would ever leave the classroom, but yeah, yeah. being an administrator was also great. Wonderful. Um, I had a wonderful sense of where I wanted to be and education was the mode that I decided to take. Mm -hmm. So Awesome. And how many years did you teach? Uh, I was in the classroom for 32 years. Amazing. Wow. And mainly middle school. Okay. That's my favorite age group. All right. Uh, not for everybody, but yeah, that's for uh, sure. <laughs> I, I enjoyed yes, it. Wonderful. The, the students are always unpredictable. One day they come in and they're mature. The next day, they're acting like they're still in elementary school. Yeah. So it keeps me on my toes. Absolutely. Then for the last 10 years, before I actually retired, I was an assistant principal in the Elmira School District. Wonderful. Wonderful. Enjoyed every minute of it. Oh, that's, that's, that's a great testimony. Um, what influenced uh, your spiritual formation during that time? Um, were, there, um, were there people? Were there situations? What, uh, what formed your uh, A little bit of both. Okay. Um, first of all, my parents. Mm -hmm. They um, really helped their seven children to realize how important people are, that um, people are to be respected, mm -hmm. loved, accepted. So there were always people in and out of our household, visitors, family, different cultures, a lot of diversity, wow. mm -hmm. uh, involvement in the neighborhood. We have what we call the neighborhood house. And all of my classmates, my friends would take courses there. And it was a fun place, mm. sort of like a community center, yeah. what we have yeah. now. But we took classes in sewing and uh, archery and photography, oh, yeah. and we had a chance to really learn about each other, and we're a strong community. What a so. blessing. That is, that is fantastic. Um, with that background, um, what, what, can you identify some of the crossroads in your life, uh, those things that... Uh, were the bedrock of, of, of who you are today uh, in, in, in back in this area? Sure. Um, going back to um, the, the previous question, mm -hmm. my um, godmother, my Aunt Jenny, was very instrumental. She was such a spiritual influence. Mm. I used to spend weekends with her, 
and I remember she had this really high bed, so we would lay, uh, kneel down beside the bed, say our, our prayers, and of course it was the famous, now I lay me down to sleep prayer that I think every child uh, has been exposed to. But she would also go around singing and humming spirituals and old hymns, old church hymns. So it was a really nice environment, like I said, on the weekends, and that was a strong spiritual influence for me. In addition, my grandmother, who was my godmother's best friend, mm -hmm. same type of person, just very church-oriented, uh, active in the church. And I think that's where my interest in volunteering and community service was also formed. There you go. Yeah, wonderful, so, great. Sounds like it was a very nurturing environment. Very nurturing. Yes. Um, truly growing up, the village helped to raise the child. There you go. There's yeah. a, few sermons in there, isn't there? Definitely, <laughs> definitely. Now, I understand you just graduated from Colgate Rochester Crozier Divinity uh, yes. School in May. Congratulations. Thank you so that much. That has been a wonderful accomplishment. Uh, what can you share with our viewers and listeners about that experience? Awesome experience. Okay. Um, and I'd like to give a shout out to the staff and faculty and classmates at Rochester Colgate Crozier Divinity School. Wonderful three-year experience mm -hmm. working on my Master's of Divinity. Mm -hmm and learning more about what God had for me to do when he gave me my call, which was, I want you to speak from the pulpit. And I don't know about you, but when you get a call, you, you kind of wonder, okay, what does that mean? What does that look like? Mm -hmm. And of course, God will only give you what you need to know mm -hmm. when you need to know it. Mm -hmm. So uh, in faith, talk to my spiritual guide, uh, guidance, um, pastor, and um, he said, well, maybe God is calling you to get some formal education in theology and mm -hmm. uh, ministry. So I ended up at Rochester Colgate, and it was an awesome three-year experience. Treasure all the discussions and the relationships that were formed there. Awesome. What was your biggest challenge? Technology. Okay. <laughs> okay. I'm, I'm getting better, <laughs> but a lot of assignments and research was done online, so yes. that was a work in progress okay. to learn how to just do everything and turn it in online. Yes, so yeah. the new world. It is, it's it is, world. and, and yeah. I have to be a part of it if Absolutely. I'm going to continue to be effective. Absolutely. Now, you serve two churches in the Elmira uh, area, yes. um, the West Side United Methodist Church and the Webb Mills United Methodist Church. Mm -hmm. And I, I, I've read a little bit of your information, uh, but there's been some s special celebrations and celebrations that are forthcoming. Can you uh, yes, share with our listeners yes. and viewers so, uh, what they might be? So excited. Mm -hmm. um, Webb Mills is a smaller church that I serve, and they have just recently celebrated 162 years. Wow. Uh, anniversary of the church being in the community and serving others. Um, they are involved with food pantry, outreach, just a lot of a lot of interesting things going on and people are very caring and uh, involved in the community. Webb Mills is the smaller but Westside is the larger church and they're getting ready to celebrate their 100th year awesome. anniversary actually on August 6th. Okay. It's coming up and we're doing what we call a homecoming Sunday, which is all the previous pastors have been invited to come back. Members have been invited to come back and share in the celebration. So there'll be a worship service and then uh, a dinner following that. Wonderful. Great celebration. Yes, I'm, yes. I'm looking forward to it Very because rich. I'm actually initiating the second hundred years yes. for that church. Yes, yes. I hadn't really thought about yes. that. Yes. Um, in that way, but yeah. it's interesting to see what they've done in the first hundred years and looking forward with vision to the second hundred. Uh, great understanding. Friends, this, uh, today we are with uh, Pastor Holly Strickland, who is the pastor of Westside United Methodist Church and Webb Mills United Methodist Church. And we're discussing her, um, her experiences and the churches in which she, she serves. Which brings me to my next question, Holly. Uh, what gifts, uh, talents, uh, spiritual gifts uh, do you bring to these churches or that has been revealed by, uh, by your call that you bring to these churches? Oh, good question. Um, I enjoy people. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm very passionate about making sure that people feel accepted and loved and, and cared for. 
Um, my passion is families, especially children, mm -hmm. and we'll probably talk about that a little later. Yes. But um, I'm organized. I'm a people person. I love, I love peace. So mm -hmm. if there's any way that I can institute a peaceful atmosphere, I'm all for it. Um, I love speaking. I'm a writer. Mm -hmm. have written several um, parenting books uh, with uh, articles with um, a couple of books that have gone out. Um, just enjoy life. I think that there's just so much to offer and a lot of times we overlook even the small things yeah. that bring beauty into our lives. Yeah. So yeah. try to promote that. Awesome. Yeah, the, just the spirit of joy. And I, and I can sense that in, in, in your spirit. Oftentimes, oftentimes gets lost in the church. Mm -hmm. We're so busy with our head down, you know, creating the vision and the mission and right. the steps and the process. We kind of forget to, to enjoy, let it Enjoy yeah. the moment yeah, and, just, and have fun. Yes. Now, to some people that might seem, oh, my goodness, how can you have fun in church? But I think that's a good thing. I think God wants us to enjoy life and appreciate what we have, the yeah, blessings absolutely. that we have. Yeah, one of the things that you, you were just sharing too um, is the idea of, of connecting the generations, you know, mm -hmm. from children to youth to young adults to adults and such. And I, I think that's so important with the idea of being a pastor to be intergenerational and Definitely. to be able to connect. How do you do that? I mean, how, how, what's been your experience up to this point? And I'm sure being a, a teacher, uh, who had to deal with kids and parents. That's right. Uh, administrators, uh, same thing. How, how, do, do you resonate with that, the idea that this is really an intergenerational calling and yes, so important today? Yes, I see that uh, as I look at the experience in parenting and as an educator, all of those experiences and skill sets that I achieved over the 42 years of my career as an mm -hmm. educator mm -hmm. are now becoming more and more apparent and useful as I uh, walk in my ministry, um, people enjoy being around other people. Yes. And so any opportunities that we can get to include all people, to be inclusive, helps with the intergenerational. Um, grandparents, a lot of grandparents are raising mm -hmm. their grandchildren mm -hmm. and even great grandparents. So they need opportunities where they can come together with not only their own age group, um, but also the younger Absolutely. Younger children. Yeah. So any way that I can facilitate that, whether it's a workshop or uh, a seminar or an article, um, I'm willing to do that. Awesome. Awesome. Now, I'm sure there's other areas um, in ministry in which you serve outside of the two churches uh, with, the, with the time, you know, element in my free and such time. Yeah, in your free time, <laughs> you know. Um, well, what are some of those things that, you, uh, that are nourishing your spirit that are making a difference in your community outside of the local church? I enjoy getting involved in the community. There are several um, areas that I really have a, a passion for, and that is, as I said, children. Mm -hmm. So anything that has to do with children coming together, being accepted, um, learning how to feel comfortable in their own skin, looking at self-respect, self-confidence, because so many times our children are not sure of themselves. Um, there's a lot out there. Mm. Not only um, literally, but also on the web and online. Yes. So we need older, more seasoned, mature adults who can help teach them, lead them, guide them yeah. to make good choices. In fact, I have a book coming out called Make Good Choices. Mm. So uh, just another opportunity to bring generations together. Yeah. Mentors, kind of. Kind mentors, of yeah, mentoring, yes, yes, yes. The yeah. old uh, big yeah. brother, big sister. Yes, yes. Pal programs yeah. that used to be around. Yeah. We need that. Yes. Our children yeah. need that. So refreshing to hear that. Um, I, I came across the idea that I shared at Endwell that 85% of people uh, make a decision to follow Christ before their 18th birthday. Eighty-five mm percent. -hmm. That's a huge percentage. That's huge, yeah. um, and, and so the the idea of mentoring the the kids and the youth is is so very important, just like you said. Which kind of is a springboard to my next question. We'll, we'll kind of divert in a little different direction here, get a little more philosophical. Okay. Um, wh where do you see the church, Big C? Uh, where do you see the church in the next five to ten years? I mean, these are different times um, where the church is not the center oftentimes of the community and there's so many distractions, as you were saying. Yes. Uh, where, where, where do you see? What's your vision uh, of the church in the next Well, it's, it's hard to say, yeah. but I would like to see the pendulum swing 
back towards more community involvement. Mm -hmm. Churches are people, not just four walls. Absolutely. So in my, um, in my ministry, I like to reach out and go outside the, the actual building of the church and get involved, be active in the community. And I think that's one way to get the younger generations involved because they don't really want to just sit in church and listen uh, for an hour or two to a sermon. It might be a good sermon, <laughs> but um, they're all about activity. So if we can get outside the four walls and clean up a neighborhood or feed the hungry or clothe the people who are needy, I think that's where the church needs to be focusing over the next 10, five, 10 years, next 100 years, mm -hmm. because that's where people are actually going to see and be the eyes and ears and feet of God. Yeah, yeah. yeah. especially in this new generation, this millennial Gen X generation, yes. they're very hands-on, it has Definitely. to have meaning, has to be authentic, uh, or they're just don't not interested, any, don't want any part of it and such yeah. things. So. Yeah. And the idea of, of, I think you're speaking kind of, that the church really is the mission station. Um, it's the place we, we come and be in relationship right. with each other and the community. In and which then we're, go out we're to yeah. the community. Yeah. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. Um, how, can, how can this church community then, this mission station, um, with so much that's happening in our world, um, we'll go a little broader scope here with okay. politics and division and I mean, the litany is, I, I could go on forever. Um, how do you see the church community helping address those issues within the congregation, within, within the people that are there? How do you, um, how do you see that as important or how do, you, how do you bridge that gap between what they see on television every night uh, and what they're doing uh, in, the, in the local church? Interesting you should say that because as the new pastor for both churches, I started out with a sermon series about loving one another. Mm. And that even though um, they didn't know me well as a pastor and I didn't know them well yet as my congregation, we still had that foundation of love. So we weren't really strangers at all. We were neighbors mm -hmm. and shared a common goal of uh, believing in God and, and loving one another, which is one of the great commandments <laughs> that we're told to do. So to take that to a broader scale, if we look at people as in the image of God, um, I think we'll, we'll start appreciating and valuing life and knowing that the same goals and the same uh, dreams and visions that another person has would be the same as what you might have. Mm -hmm. So it goes as uh, far as just treating someone the way you would like to be treated, with respect, um, with honor, mm -hmm. with interest. And those are just basic human characteristics that I think we all should yeah. strive for. Yeah. And um, if we look at each other with the eyes of love, I believe we will be able to have world peace because we will look at people as, you know, not what they look like or how they act or how they worship, but as someone that God has created and love is the common denominator. Yeah, profound. Thank so. you. I, I appreciate that. Um, you've been, or were, or continue to be. I'm, I'm